Hi everyone, we're so excited to have you here to learn about setting permissions in an app. My name's Larissa and I'm part of the customer success team here at Kintown. I'll be walking you through this training today. This is a great training for anyone who will be a Kintone app builder because we'll go through how to set up permissions in apps. After this training, you'll have all you need to be able to determine how your end users view and interact with the data that you have in those apps. To review a brief agenda, today you'll learn about an overview of permissions, setting permissions for individual apps at the app record and field level, and restricting access to apps with a private space. To navigate to permissions from within an app, click the gear wheel to the right and select the App Settings tab. App permissions are one of the most important steps when creating a new app because it allows you to set who can manage app settings and who can view and interact with specific records and data. Each app has its own permission settings. Under permissions, there are three levels we'll review. App level to set permissions for the app as a whole. Record level to set permissions on a per record basis based on a set condition. And field level to set view and edit permissions to an individual field. App level permission allows you to set who can view the app, add, edit, or delete records, manage the app, import from file, and export to file. To set app permissions, add the name of a user, group, or department you'd like to set permissions for. To the right, check the boxes you'd like to grant them permission to and uncheck those you don't want them to have access to. So in addition to myself, I'd like to give Marie access to manage these backend settings. If you want to restrict access completely for certain users so they don't even know the app exists, You'd uncheck all boxes for everyone and give permissions only to specific users, departments, or groups above. For this case, I want everyone to be able to use the app as normal, just with no extra permissions to settings. If you start to add in departments and groups, please note priority goes from top to bottom, so whatever is on the top is what the system goes by. Marie and I are both part of the customer success department. If I add that department above and don't give app management permission, I've just taken our permission away to manage the app because top takes priority and the customer success department is displaying above my settings and Marie's settings. You'll just need to move the department below the names for all users in that department. I highly recommend making sure no one has access to delete records, even those who manage the app. Once a record is deleted, you can't get it back. If you need to delete a record, you can give yourself delete permission and then remove it once completed. Accidents happen, so this will ensure you don't lose any data. Once set, you'll click Save. With record level permissions, you can restrict view and edit access to specific records for certain users, groups, or departments based on set conditions. This includes, but is not limited to, allowing only the user who created a record to view and edit the record, preventing users from editing a record once the status is marked as complete, and hiding a record marked as confidential from certain users. To set record level permissions, click Add and fill out the conditions. In this case, we want to set permissions to records when the status is any of complete. Set the user, group, or department you'd like to set permissions for. You can also set specific permissions for user, group, or department selection fields you have on your form from this dropdown. Now we'll set the necessary permissions. For this example, we want to set permissions for all users to only have view access once the record status is complete. For this, we'll uncheck Edit and Delete from Everyone. If you have multiple record permissions set, you'll notice you have the ability to drag and drop them in a different order. This is because the order of permissions set matters as well. Top takes priority. Once permissions are all set, click Save.
Field permissions allow you to hide or restrict, edit, and view permission on individual fields. This is perfect to limit certain users from being able to edit details or to completely hide any sensitive data. Click Add and select the field you'd like to set permissions for. On the right, enter the user group or department to set permission for view and edit access for the specified field. Check the permission needed. In this example, we only want to allow the person who is marked as the assignee to have permission to edit the status of this record. Once set, click Save. In each section, order matters when setting proper permissions. If you're having trouble achieving the desired result, take a second look at the order of your permissions. If you're still stuck, don't hesitate to reach out to the support team at kintone.com support and we'd be happy to help. Permissions can be a little tricky at first, but once set, they're a powerful feature that is essential to your operations in Kintone. I recommend using a temporary user seat for testing and open it up in a different browser than the one you're setting permissions in. This will allow you to set and test the permissions side by side to ensure you're getting the desired result. Spaces allow you to further organize your apps and discussions and collaborate with other team members on specific topics. All apps within a space have the same permission settings that we just went over for app, record, and field levels. However, spaces can be set to public or private. A public space is available to everyone in Kintone and therefore you need to set your permissions for your apps with that in mind. On the top right of a public space, it will say public space. To change a space from public to private, from a space, click the ellipses on the top right, select space settings and check the box private. You can add members from within the space settings from the members tab and when you save they will display under people. A private space is only available to those that you invite to the private space. Those not invited will not see the space from Portal Home. With that, you may decide to keep your permissions more open depending on those that were invited to the space. There wouldn't necessarily be a need to restrict everyone from seeing or doing something in the app because you already are restricting access to the space and in turn access to those apps that live within the space. You can tell a space is private by checking the top right. Private spaces also have a lock icon to the left of the name on Portal Home.